Chechnya, Yeltsin consults cabinet, his drinks cabinet. <laughs> Device in Adam's car, luckily not one of his. <laughs> England v Germany, two world wars, one world cup, then they got lucky. <laughs> Please welcome the man who already thinks it's all over, Mr. Ian Lee. What's a guy to do? Hello, and welcome to the 11 o'clock show. It's war! England versus Germany, and the tabloids have declared war on our mortal enemies with a fervour not seen since about two weeks ago when we played our other mortal enemies, Scotland, of course. <laughs> why, why can't we ever get any of the easy teams? Well, I'll tell you why, because we're the easy team. <laughs> If we want an easy ride, we have to play Narnia's first 11. <laughs> Mostly dwarves, and they've got a wardrobe in goal. Mind you, you've got to watch out for that Aslan. He cheats. He's a right lion bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But let's face it, 1966 apart, history has been very unkind to us. In recent years, it's a bit of an embarrassment. In 1990, we lost. Gaza cried like a bride does on her wedding day, especially if she's marrying Gaza. And, <laughs> and in Euro... 96, we were left more heartbroken than Vanessa Feltz being made to watch a video of a cake shop burning down. <laughs> Those lovely cakes, come to me! Because, because Wembley's being rebuilt, they'll probably end up playing in Manchester. At least that way, at least Beckham will be able to find the stadium. <laughs> He's not very clever. Uh, Wembley's being rebuilt as part of England's bid to host the World Cup in 2006. Germany are also bidding for the tournament and are also building a brand new stadium. Of course, the Germans started the work sooner because their builders nipped out early and put their trowels down. <laughs> trowels. <laughs> trowels. Not trowels. It's clever. Think of it. Clever. But enough of this footballing frippery. Let's get on with the show. Please welcome the girl who's a real Alfreda Zayn pet, Daisy Donovan. <laughs> Calm down, Bruce Lee. <laughs> now, Daisy, Daisy, do you think that we dwell too much on the war in our football clashes with Germany? Yes, Ian. We should remember the good things that Germany has mm. done for the world. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Daisy, tell us what's coming up in tonight's show. Later on, a special guest, Madame Dee Dee, will be using her psychic powers to channel personal messages to the public. Cross my palm, Miss Silver, and I'll tell your fortune. Pick a colour, any colour. <laughs> hmm, who is that mystery mystic? Perhaps she is me. But now, here's the headlines. And tonight's top stories. Tony Blair has launched NHS Online. The system diagnoses what's wrong with internet users. It's just a single page that says, you've got no friends and you wank too much. <laughs> There is a page for people with incontinence. It's at www.nhsonline slash dot need another slash dot and another slash dot. <laughs> the International Monetary Fund had threatened to withhold a £400 million grant to Russia. Boris Yeltsin is unmoved and proposes to raise funds by taking his empties back. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the front, these Russian soldiers were unimpressed when three military magicians failed to make an elephant appear. Ta da! <laughs> see? Now I see. Thanks. Jerry Adams has protested after finding a listening device hidden in his car. Early reports suggested it could just be someone's ear left over from a punishment beating. <laughs> However, we can reveal that he has indeed been bugged. We've got the tape. Oh, Jesus Christ, Martin, turn that shit off. Put the tape in. That's better. Here we go. Whoa! We're going to Ibiza. Whoa! Back to Ireland. Adams has said he wants to speak to the chief bugger. Downing Street has sent Peter Mandelson. <laughs> the Black Watch Regiment have been booked to perform at the Queen Mum's 100th birthday party. A regiment spokesman said, well, if the worst comes to the worst, we'll still get a 50% cancellation fee. <laughs> also appearing will be the Royal Medical Squadron, who will be performing the changing of the hip. <laughs> Jerry Hall is a controversial choice as a judge for the Whitbread Literary Prize. The announcement of the winner will be delayed as she has to wait for the films to come out first. Parent 
different groups have expressed concern over a new toy, the Pardon Me Bear. The teddy guffs and then apologises in a posh voice. Its success has led the company to announce plans for a new toy, Follow Through Bear. <laughs> A Manchester man has been sentenced to six months after being found guilty of drink driving for the 26th time. In his defence, the man told the judge, I fucking love you, you're my best friend, you are, you bastard. <laughs> of course he's his best friend, they've met 26 times already. And those were today's headlines. <laughs> now, Daisy. Have you heard about the plan to start a new European super army? I think it's a brilliant idea. It'll be a great combination of the efficiency of the Germans, the stubborn resolve of the French, the passion of the Italians, and the blinkered stereotyping of the English. Good point, Daisy. <laughs> but is it really that simple? Here's Ricky Gervais with his report. Last night, Margaret Thatcher attacked plans for a combined European defence force. I got a lot of time for Thatcher. She gave us the glory years, and she's a good lad. But she's wrong on this one, and I'll tell you why. A combined force would be amazing. England leading the whole of Europe into battle. It'd be like the rest of the world 11. I'd play a 4-4-2 formation. Obviously up front, us and the Germans, we are the best at war. Controversially, I would have had the Israelis up front with us. Uh, they love a ruck, but I still think we've got to keep them and the Germans apart. Still a bit, ooh. Some people say Israelis in Europe. Mm. If that's the case, then Dana International should give us back our trophy. Uh, behind them in midfield, Spaniards, they're hard. Um, fight bulls, they throw donkeys off roofs. Uh, Belgians, you know. Luxembourg, um, uh, Austria, they got hard people, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Hitler, of course. He wasn't so much hard though, he was just horrible, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lady Thatcher's fears were echoed by America, who feel this combined force could undermine NATO and compromise Allied missions, such as the Kosovo conflict and the Gulf War. Yeah, the Yanks are probably worried that if we don't let them get involved, they won't be able to shoot our planes out of the sky by mistake. Um, the Dutch, I'd have them in the team, they like a fight when they're not too busy wanking over animal porn in a dark room and off their tits. My mates went to Amsterdam last year, this is true, yeah? And they're in a video shop, and there was one lot of videos, pregnant woman shits on dwarf, uh, then um, uh, babes love horses, then the bottom one, just in plain paper, was extreme perversion. What can that be? What can be worse than some cracked up slut with child shitting on one of the time bandits? So the team's coming together. I'm not going to let the French play with us. Oh, we were playing defence, resistance, never mind resistance, have a go. Uh, that's, that's my Euro army. This is Ricky Gervais for the 11 o'clock show. Look, one final thing, if we do put this team together and we do draw America in a war, say, Italians, choose what side you want to be on and stick to it. Just a tip. <laughs> has just unveiled the online division of the NHS, which means that you can now get that distinctively cold, impersonal, and often wildly inaccurate service from the comfort of your own home. This NHS in the home has many advantages. You've more chance of finding a bed and less chance of having to lie next to an old man in pyjamas who keeps telling boring tales of Navy life. Unless you're a rent boy. <laughs> the system will slash waiting lists by allowing users to diagnose illnesses at home. But don't worry if you're suffering from technophobia. Here's our guide to using the online NHS of the future. It's our high-tech home hospital do's and don'ts. Do. Recognise that self-diagnosis spares you the inconvenience of a trip to the doctors. Don't. Recreate the atmosphere of your local surgery by covering your coffee table with old copies of TV Quick and sitting on a broken chair next to a boy with a pot stuck on his head. <laughs> Men, do. Follow the site's advice and give yourself a full testicular exam by carefully rotating each nutsack and checking for lumps. <laughs> Don't. Flatten them against the living room window and ask passing school children to point out irregularities. <laughs> Ladies, don't. Trust everything you see on the internet. It would be very, very easy for a bogus doctor to set up a convincing website. Do. Become suspicious if he asks you to face the webcam and check your temperature by rubbing an oversized cucumber between your breasts. <laughs> Do. Ask the doctor for help if you can't shift the mouse. Don't. Drink a pint of olive oil and try and pull it out by the tail. <laughs> Do. Be prepared to show your doctor intimate parts of your body down the webcam. Don't. Do it using the office computer. No one wants to look at your infected bell end in the middle of an audit. Do. Be prepared for the internet doctor to give you bad news. Don't. Weep into the keyboard. It fucks up the keys and you won't be able to use it to type your will. <laughs> 
And for those of you who are wondering what the Internet Doctor looks like, we can exclusively reveal this is who you'll be chatting to online. <laughs> He's got a wonderful bedside manner, but very, very cold hands. <laughs> hey, guess what? That was our high-tech home hospital do's and don'ts. Hey! and reputed murderer of Haile Selassie, Mengistu Mariam, has been discovered living a life of luxury in South Africa. To find out the facts, let's go over to top DJ John Peel. John, thank you for joining us today. Do you believe Mengistu was guilty of mass murder? Well, of course, I spent a long time in Ethiopia when I... Oh, I can't believe Sheila's going to be furious. Um, <laughs> I uh, spent a long time in Ethiopia in the 1970s, and uh, at that time, for some reason, I was managing a young Birmingham reggae band called Musical Youth, who uh, I thought were rather experimental due to their sound and use of uh, very old dwarves as frontmen. And, uh, of course, uh, it turns out they weren't nearly as experimental as I thought. It, uh, I was just playing them at the wrong speed, and I remember them being absolutely furious about that. Yes, I'd John, but do you feel Mengistu should stand trial? And, uh, eventually what happened was it turned out Haile Selassie was a big fan of the band, and uh, he asked to sit in on past the duchy, which uh, sent the crowd, crowd in Addis Ababa absolutely mad, uh, especially when Haile sang the biddly, 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 biddly bomb bit, which, uh, you know, and we got chatting afterwards, and he explained he was not called the Lion of Africa because of his strength, uh, but more because he'd been particularly impressive in the Islamic Gilbert and Sullivan Operatic Society's version of Wizard of Oz, you know, which was brilliant. I remember him dancing around, had the most enormous hair. He was a kind of quite a cowardly person as well. In fact, I remember the people Do you from feel Namibia. that Ethiopia is more unstable than ever before, point, John? And, uh, well, eventually, Halley, uh, he actually uh, <laughs> asked if Musical Youth would play his uh, annual Royal Variety show, as he'd already booked Gary Coleman from TV's different strokes and uh, he thought they might get on rather well together with them all being midgets and that and uh, <laughs> unfortunately they started having a who's the shortest competition and it all got you know very very nasty and eventually we had to pop Gary in a box and uh, post him back to America and just so okay, we were trying John, to... thanks John, I'm afraid we've run out of time. Daisy, what is this pint of milk just doing here? It's a little test for you oh. to make sure you still got your feet on the ground. How much is a pint of milk? About 35, 36 pence. Ha! Not this pint. Costs five pounds. Fiver for some milk? Mm-hmm. You see, it's special millennium milk. You can tell that because it has millennium written upon the side. Well, what is so good about that? Uh, it's millennium milk. <laughs> Anything with millennium on it is this season's must-have, which is why we sent out our rogue street trader to prove it. Watch this. See you after the break. Excuse me, sir. Can I interest you in some millennium milk? You see, now that's just an ordinary lighter, isn't it? I mean, it's all right, it's serviceable, but this is a genuine Millennium lighter. See, it's got the genuine sticker. £2.50? Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's a Millennium lighter, isn't it? It's not just an ordinary lighter, is it? What's so special about it? Just got a sticker on it? Well, yeah, it's got a Millennium sticker on it, but you can't get these anywhere else. And well, that's Millennium water, and that actually comes from the Millennium mountains. So when all the computers are crashing, all the planes are crashing, all that, you've still got your Millennium biro, it's still right. I did have them in Millennium Red and it's Millennium bad, Blue. Perhaps you could have a Millennium Meal with this Millennium Potato, Millennium Mash. I just don't hear about it, really, I don't. I just want batteries. How much are your batteries? Well, batteries? they're two, two pounds. Right, two pounds. Right. If you prefer it. Oh, sorry, mate, it's the old pill. Welcome back to the 11 o'clock show. Now, NASA have just admitted they've lost contact with their latest Mars probe. The thing is, it's probably crashed somewhere in Liverpool and is currently being stripped of its special foil coating to help the locals with their quaint tradition of freebasing crack. <laughs> However, NASA is still planning to send a manned spacecraft to the Red Planet. But we think the mission need not be a failure, and if you're planning to apply to be the first astronaut on Mars, there are a few key points you should remember. Crew. Pick crew members who can cope with the heavy demands of space travel. Don't give the job to your simple mate Barry because he always knocks about in a pair of silver moon boots. And please, <laughs> importantly, don't take Nicholas Lindhurst along for a laugh on the way. He is very funny in sitcoms, but they're scripted. In the cold vacuum of space, he's very, very dull. Touchdown! The world is watching, so choose your words carefully when you touch down on the Red Planet. Neil Armstrong's speech secured him a place in history. Don't blow your own chances by letting it get to you and shout, Fuck me, I'm on Mars! <laughs> Hygiene. Keeping clean in zero gravity can be difficult. Always use the special equipment provided. And most importantly, remember to flush. There's nothing that will accept your crew members more than being smacked in the back of the head by one of your floaters. <laughs> 
gravity. Mars's gravitational pull is a lot less than Earth's, so take along equipment to measure its effect. Don't try to test gravity by seeing how far a little monkey travels when you kick it. <laughs> Do take along an old mountain bike and try to act out the bit with E.T. and the BMXs. It's very sweet. Aliens. Although Mars is thought to be lifeless, you may encounter an alien. If so, convince it that you come in peace. And please don't sweet talk your way into its home, eat all its grub and try to shag its sister. I know she's got three breasts, but you've got the mission to think of. <laughs> and those are our intergalactic top five tips on making it as an astronaut. Daisy, I've been meaning to ask you all day, would you like to live underwater? Oh, I don't think so, Ian. My skin would go all wrinkly and I'd have to talk something like this, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Daisy, I, I think we've got the idea now, actually. Yeah, right. because it could actually happen, Daisy. It's quite a serious thing. Because a new study has revealed that Britain's destined to be submerged by the year 2200. Here's my report. Please shut the fuck up. Scientists are predicting that due to global warming, within 300 years, the majority of this country will be underwater. If that happens, we'll lose places like Newcastle, Liverpool and Norwich. But what's the downside to this? Well, I've come here to London to find out. In a few years' time, Britain is going to be completely flooded due to global warming. How worried are you? Oh, dear. <laughs> How wide am I? Worried. I can, see, I can see you're not very wide, quite shapely, nice knockers. How worried are you? Where are you? I'm very worried. It's our responsibility to start planning and thinking, well, our great-great-great-great-grandchildren are going to be in trouble, we should help them out. Yeah, but it's so far ahead, I'm not really worried. It doesn't worry me. You... In any case, all the scientists seem to be arguing amongst themselves yeah. anyway. What, 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 what makes scientists know so much about it anyway? What makes them such experts? Well, that's true, yes. It's their years of training, to be honest, and studying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The government are going to make it law that you have to drink a gallon of water a day to save the country, to save the country. Well, if that is what needs to be done, then that's not what that's what needs to be done. And uh, if you do that for your country, oh yeah, definitely, I would do that. You can only wee once though a day. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you'd just be pissing it back out, and it would be no, it would be the same amount of water, but well, it'll be yeah. yellow. I think it's about them, you know, um, putting a lavatory all over the place. Scientists are also saying that in order to keep the human race going, we're going to have to mate with dolphins. <laughs> would you consider bringing off a dolphin in your mouth to keep the human race going? No. <laughs> it would be something you're interested. No. Scientists have invented a way that they can inflate your balls so that they act like armbands and you can, you can float about. <laughs> Would you be having something like that done when the, the planet floods? Yeah, yeah. The only problem with it is, of course, if you, you, you spend the, you've got big balls, you spend the afternoon grinding with a lady but not actually having sex, that evening you've got that terrible ache. The only way to relieve it is to crack one off, isn't it? Well, obviously, as I said, I won't... Be, oh, I won't, I won't. <laughs> God! God, I've got a wank! Natural, na naturally, I won't be risking that. So there we have it. While the rest of the country may be worried about being underwater, at least this does mean there'll be an increase in water sports. And I don't just mean some rough German prosy pissing in your face. <laughs> Although that is quite a good idea. This is me and Lee, The 11 O'Clock Show, London. Now here's some news just in. Delia Smith's latest book for Recipe Idiots, How to Cook Book 2, is launched this week. If you'd like to buy it, first you'll need to get hold of a copy of how to buy a book, part one. <laughs> and now, travel news for people in the London area. There are delays on the underground due to the wrong sort of twat on the line. <laughs> a new female urinal means that women can now go to the loo just like men. Presumably that means girls will be able to just pull down their pants and piss on the floor. <laughs> and that was the news just in. <laughs> Daisy, it's been said, three times you're a talented girl is there anything you can't do well ian i like to think i can turn my hand to anything i can moonwalk i can do the rubik's cube in 20 seconds i can even predict the future really mm, well these people thought so when i became madame dd Dee Dee for a day descendant of authentic romany gypsy types take a look went to the fortune teller had my fortune read oh. cross my palm with silver and i'll tell your fortune Pick a colour, any colour. R-E-D. Where are you from originally? North. Yes. Doncaster. No. Dudley. No. Bootle. No. Are you making this up? Hold your palm out. <laughs> I'm just reading instructions. 
You're dead. <laughs> I think they're quite cheap. His name is... No, you, you, you're supposed to tell me, aren't you? <laughs> Not being rude. I'm quite rude. Hmm? Quite rude. What? You, you could help. Oh, right, OK, right. His name's Drew and he's a cop. Drew, give me a name. Give you a name. Philip. Philip. I saw Philip. <laughs> Pick a card, any card. <laughs> Ten of diamonds. Mr. Pint the milkman. <laughs> Leon. Are you there? Tap if you're there, Leon. Tap. <laughs> I'm going to the right, yeah. Nothing. No. I knew about Philip. You didn't. I did. But I knew in my heart of hearts. <laughs> I could do better than you. Could you? Do you want to tell me my fortune? <laughs> Are you stoned? <laughs> so, for more on the top story, the possible formation of a European army, go over now to Ricky Gervais. Ricky, would the formation of a European army mean the end of NATO and Britain's participation in UN peacekeeping forces? I'll be honest, I'm getting fed up with all these peacekeeping forces and making all these weapons. Let's use them up. Let's have a proper world war. Last good one was what? 60 years ago. Wasn't my favourite. The first world war was my favourite. It had everything. Mustard gas, gangrene, bayonets. Could have done without the poetry. But... Right. And <laughs> if we have this next war, you'll be fighting, will you, Gervais? I'd love to. I can't. Yeah, why? <laughs> I've got really bad gay. I'm gay. I'm... <laughs> They're not allowed in, are they? We. We're... OK, thanks very much, Ricky. Cheers, cuddles. Oh, look at the muck in here. I can never go back to Reading, definitely, now. Tomorrow night, our special guest will be pint-sized rocker Susie Quattro. But just before we go, Benetton have withdrawn this controversial advert after it caused widespread offence. They've blamed their advertising company, <laughs> saying, we asked for a picture of a man slipping into a warm fleece. Good night. Good night.